Now, gentlemen, we have a patient. Uh, I would like to demonstrate a few signs and then we discuss. Isko ungli ko apne naad pe lagao aur meri ungli ko lagao. Now, look at her movements. There is an intention tremor. And as she approaches the target, the tremor gets worse. Fir hath lagao. Hath lagao shabash. All right. Ab dusre hath se karo. And that's it. So there is a lot of clumsiness in her movements. All right. Ab hath ko yun saamne karo. Do it like this. All right. Aankhye band karo. All right. Now, let me give you a um, rule of thumb. If the stretched hands, they go upward, there should be slight doubt that the patient has a cerebellar disorder. And if they go asymmetrically like this, if the orientation is changed, then if patients with, uh, uh, with sensory loss or loss of position sense, they adopt this condition. So once you ask the patient to stretch, if they go high, then usually you can doubt for a Same. cerebellar disease. If they go like this, they're apart, or so that means there's a loss of position. So in her case, you karo hath. All right. Aankhye band karo. So they stay there. All right. The symmetry does not change. Achha, yun karo hath ko. Tez, 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 shabai. Us hath se idhar karo. There's some clumsiness more on the right side. Yun karo. All right. Okay. Achha, ye mujhe batao ke agar tumhe mein kahun ke is mein chawal padhe hain. Kha ke dikhao mujhe. कैसे खाओगी? Now you see the clumsiness as it comes to the closer to the mouth, it gets worse. Now this, these are basically cerebellar signs, and she's suffering from a degenerative cerebellar disease. Obviously, in times to come, this will keep on getting worse. People in different age groups due to different causes can have a cerebellar disease. If it is progressive, that probably would be disabling at some stage of life. It is disabling even at this stage of life because even walking is not that easy for her. Now from rehabilitation point of view, what can we do to assist the patient or give rehabilitation tips? The first tip is that you should try to teach the patient that if they make a smaller limb movement, then the patient will be more stable than a longer limb movement. For example, this is a longer limb movement. This is a shorter limb movement. Now, when she was eating, there was a clumsiness. Now, if I tell her, Aage ho jau, yun karo, like this, all right, easy. Ab chamash movement alo. It's little better. Is tarah haath rakke, yun karke khane mein asani huye na? Betar huye? E yun khade hao, yun ho jau. Doesn't matter. Ab isko khao. Look at the whole movement. हाँ, movement डालो। ठीक है? अब इसी को बिल्कुल यूँ हाथ कर लो। यूँ हाथ कर लो, ठीक है? ये when she does like this, so she actually has made the limb smaller, the moving limb small, the arc is smaller. अब इसको ये देखो, अब इसको यूँ पकड़ो, पकड़ के थोड़ा सा मुंह आगे करो। थोड़ी सी चम्मच आगे करो, ठीक है? करो। ऐसा ऐसा, हाँ। शाबाश। This is how you keep teaching and training. 
that you have to compensate this clumsiness by bringing forward and this is for males particularly you know for adults when they do have to shave they usually make a lot of cuts mm -hmm. so you ask them to keep the elbows mm -hmm. a mirror in front and then do it this will be much easier mm -hmm. than doing it this way mm -hmm. eating this would be much easier than eating it this way because you get a support similarly writing so use of elbows इसके ऊपर लिखो पीछे हो जाओ अब इसको पकड़ो और इसके ऊपर लिखो पांच उधर हाथ नहीं लगाना हाँ लिखो और राइट अब तुम पूरा हाथ इधर रखो यू पूरा हाथ आगे कर लो पकड़ो अब पांच लिखो इधर लिखो इधर ऑल राइट सो इफ यू लुक एट दीज टू दिस इज नॉट फाइव तीन लिखो थ्री लिखो ये देखो मैं बताऊं तुम्हें ये मैं बैठा हूं दिस इज हाउ यू हैव टू टीच ये मैं बैठा हूं और आगे हो जाओ और आगे हो जाओ खड़े हो स्टूल आगे कर लो या खड़े हो जाओ बिल्कुल खड़े हो जाओ खड़े हो खड़े हो जाओ ठीक है खड़े हो जाओ हाथ यहाँ रखो अब लिखो तीन लिखो और राइट सो बैठ जाओ सो वॉट यू हैव टू डू इज बेसिकली नाउ द री हैव टिप्स for a patient suffering from cerebellar ataxia is that you should try to shorten the moving arc and for activities which have to be done on the table ask the patient to keep your elbows and then make this arc shorter this would give you some stability <coughs> number 2 give repetitive movements you know the more repetition of a task you will do because what happens is that patient with this kind of a disease when they stop doing so they stop rehearsing it they stop practicing so practicing it and then the same activity gets even worse acceleratedly worse because you're not practicing it so therefore they must keep on doing these exercises for special education teachers i think that tip has to be they should have a bigger pens if they can't hold the pen like this they should hold the pen like this <laughs> and even if they have a problem certain uh, assistive devices can be used i hope that would give you something to do with your cerebellar patients next time all right thank you very much